I don't plan on going to like a big college and waste all them years on education because you're probably not going to get a job, a good job anyway. So I'm going to focus on things I can actually achieve rather than chasing dreams. Yeah, I mean, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do in life, but I, if it's anything, I want it to be something that interests me, so. I don't really have one big dream. I have, like, stuff I want to accomplish in life. I just want to be known. I want to I wanna be successful, known, just be a good type of person that everybody wants to be around. I don't want to be someone that people don't want to be around. Like, I just want to be cool with it. I just want to do me. I just want to play best what you want. Make it past 21. I have a name for myself. Pray every day that I wake up the next day. Because the thing people do nowadays is just crazy. That's all I really wish for. That's one of my biggest dreams is to stay alive. It's hard to imagine yourself in a life situation that is enhancing, if nothing around you suggests that as a possibility. It's very difficult to have dreams when you're in a community that doesn't have dreams. A lot of crime, a lot of poverty, a lot of human suffering, and not much hope. Manchester is different from any other part of the city. A land apart, a small enclave. That was a blank, like many kids, just a fog. You know you were alive, you knew something was gonna happen, but you didn't know what and you didn't know how. They say like when Bill Strickland was in high school, he had a teacher, and then his teacher explains ceramics to him in a way that made like other things in his life make sense. It was that experience that transformed my educational life dramatically because I had a reason to learn. The riots were happening and people were getting shot in my neighborhood by the police. And so there's a lot of death and self-destruction going on a lot of public violence. So it was in the midst of that that I started my pottery program to try to provide some kind of an alternative to that thought process. The kids started showing up, and a lot of the kids really liked the place, and so they started coming back. And then like it developed, and then he got a grant, and then he built this place. Most people thought that I was crazy, that my view of the world was to train kids in the arts and somehow that would translate into a better life. No one assumed that the arts would have anything to contribute to making life better in the community. Hi, Fred. Hi, Elsie. You haven't met Bill. This Hello, is Bill, Bill Strickland. Bill, this is Fred Glad Rogers. Glad to meet you. My pleasure. The point is that you don't have to go somewhere to be a part of the world. You can bring the world to where you live. I knew that, or in sense that, if you could create a beautiful space, it would ultimately create beautiful people. The home life of some of our students are um, very uh, traumatizing events on, on, on occasion. People are a function of the environment where you find them. You build prisons, people act like prisoners. You build beautiful centers like this, you get beautiful people. At school, the teacher is constantly focused on academic achievement and grade. It's like they don't want to see us succeed sometimes. They just want to go home every day to their family and get paid. It's tragic. The educational system cannot do it alone. So it can do a hell of a lot more. The way that, that Carrick does it, like, it's you walk in the door and they're basically saying, I don't trust you. The way Manchester does it is you walk in and they're you're saying, okay, I trust you completely. The only way to trust people is to trust them. 
but you got to give them a chance. You can't just talk about it as a theory. You have to do it. Every school in America should run just like this place. They should also look just like this place so that the aesthetics need to change, the attitude and the values need to change, but it can be done. Everybody's going to die, it's just a question of when. So the question is, what are you going to do between now and then? Well, I want to make sure, certain, that I didn't waste any time. I'm absolutely determined to, to build as many of these as I can. I have no intentions of changing my mind, not even a little bit, when we get these centers built. Jeff Skull, Mr. eBay, said, I was the first person that he'd ever met who manufactured hope as a product. He says, you're in the hope business. In 10 years, I see myself 